Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about how we have our digital nomad lifestyle living part-time in Atlanta and part-time on our houseboat. It can get a little hectic and expensive. We're gonna share with you three life hacks that have made it so much easier with a baby and dog in tow to live between a houseboat and also in our home in Atlanta. honest that we're not full-time liverboards so that means that we're not at our boat 100% of the time we're coming and going from more than one place and with a baby in tow it can get complicated very quickly our main hub has been at our home in the heart of Atlanta Trey and I have lived there for over a decade and really love our life there we've got to see the city grow up around us as we've been growing up as well and we're really not ready to leave Atlanta so this really gives us the option to still be around our friends in the city and really close to our family, but then also to start living a lifestyle that feels a little bit more authentic to us. So now the reality check of being able to maintain a house in Atlanta and also having our houseboat up here on the lake. As I mentioned earlier, it can get expensive and knowing this going in, we made sure that we planned accordingly. We may not have the nicest car, we may not always have the nicest clothes or go on the nicest vacations. And that's okay with us because having the flexibility to be able to go up to the boat or be in Atlanta whenever we would like, to us is worth more than a car that might be nicer than we have now or the new shoes that come out. So when you think, how did we do it? That's how we did it. We made a very conscious effort to watch what we spent. We weren't nickel and diming everything, but we'd also ask ourselves, hey, if we buy this now, what are we giving up in the future? And just asking that question really helped us be in a position to have the place in Atlanta and the boat up here. These are the three life hacks that have made our lives easier as part-time liverboards. The first is to keep duplicate items at the boat. The biggest way that we've really streamlined our lives is to keep daily routine items at the boat. So what that means is clothes, kitchenware, baby items, toiletries, anything that you use routinely every single day, it's worth purchasing an extra set to keep at the boat. Or if you already have duplicates at home, you can always bring those up to the boat too. That makes it so much easier. For years, Trey and I saved items that we had duplicates of and we would put it in a little box in our closet that was labeled boat box. And we kept cups in there, we kept extra shirts and shorts, anything that we thought we would take to Goodwill. Instead of taking it to Goodwill, we actually kept it in a box in our garage. And before we knew it, we had a ton of items to take to the boat. Trey's actually wearing a pair of golf shorts that he's had for 20 years <laughs> and has not gotten rid of. And it's things like that where you just keep using the things that you have and it's given him a new life here on our houseboat. Yep, I've had these shorts for just about 20 years now. Two of the pockets pretty much don't exist anymore. I'm actually pretty proud to say that I haven't put on too much weight in 20 years that these, these shorts actually still fit me. It's so much easier if you only have to pack a handful of items every time that you're on the move, especially with a baby because you can't leave the house without pretty much packing up your whole house anyway. So if you can already have stuff ready to go as much as possible, it makes it that much easier to actually get out the door and live that digital nomad lifestyle. The second hack for being a part-time live aboard slash digital nomad is having reliable internet. This can be a little bit tricky being on a boat because we don't have any type of landline or cable connection to provide internet like we would have at our house. Our marina has internet from a local company and there's an antenna on top of the boat that points to another antenna at land that gives us fairly reliable internet. There's different tiers that you can purchase, anywhere from between six megs into 20 megs, and you can also purchase these for different time frames, maybe a day, a week, a month, or even an annual contract as well. The reliability so far has actually been pretty good. What we do is before we come up, I'll turn the internet on 
and once we leave it automatically shuts off there might be a day or so of overlap of us not being here and the internet being on we subscribe to the 20 megabyte plan that's enough for me to have conference calls for work and for jesse to do anything else that she might need to do as well one thing that we're still looking to figure out is what we're going to do when we're away from the dock we have data plans on our cell phone we're also thinking about maybe wireless hotspots. But one thing I'm really excited about and hopefully we can get is SpaceX. I have put my deposit down. It was $99. I put my deposit down. And once SpaceX and Mr. Elon Musk can launch enough satellites to cover the southern United States, we hope to get an email that the device will be shipping soon. That way we'll be able to have extremely fast internet while we're at the dock and also away from the dock. So hopefully more to come on that. And the third hack that we found to be incredibly helpful is having our thermostat hooked up to the Wi-Fi. As we mentioned earlier, we turn the Wi-Fi on and off to the boat and having the thermostat hooked up to the Wi-Fi allows us to set the temperature before we get here. So in the summer months, we know that we don't want to run the power all day, every day when we're not here. So we'll set the thermostat upwards to almost 85 degrees. And in the winter time, we'll do the same thing. We'll set the thermostat down to about 55 degrees because we won't be here and we don't want the heater to run as well. So we can turn the internet on, as we mentioned earlier, and then our thermostat will log in and we'll move it up to about 72 degrees, sometimes a couple hours, maybe even a day before we get here to make sure that it's comfortable when we're here, especially if we have a baby to put down for a nap. And if you have any suggestions about what we might be able to do differently, or if you have some hacks that have worked incredibly well for you, please leave them in the comment section below here. We would love to hear about those. We always want to be learning. Let us know what those are, and that'd be really cool to check out in the video. These three life hacks have been super helpful to streamline our lives as we become part-time liveaboards. Trey growing up on houseboats really helped us shortcut some of the way there, but we're still learning. And anything that we find helpful, then we'll share with you guys as we go along our journey. And always, if you want to follow along with us this spring and summer, make sure and hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell. And you can also follow us on Instagram where we post there as well to engage with our audience and hear more about what y'all are doing as part-time liveaboards or digital nomads as well. And thanks for watching and supporting us, y'all. <laughs> okay. That was awesome. <laughs>